I dreamt last night the moon was so bright it melted the walls away and it wasn't alarming when I saw Prince Charming come into my bedroom and say let me persuade you to come to the place where tomorrow meets today Ooh. If you were a scientist, you were in. Your excellent science, I'm your faithful servant. Building a new world. When did all this begin, Dad? Well, son, it's a very old story. It's, uh, it's so old, it's hard to say when it really began. It could have been back in 1540 when Copernicus identified the Earth as a speck of dust moving in an orbit around the sun. Or it could have been in 1905 when a young German physicist arrived at a fundamental truth that matter could be converted into energy and expressed it in the equation E equals mc squared. Then there were other dates. 1937, the first industrial atom smasher. 1942, the first nuclear chain reaction. 1945, the bomb. Somewhere in the course of these events, the dawn came up on the atomic era. It's going to have a tremendous effect on our town down there, son. It'll be felt in every town in America. And it won't matter if they make ships or shoes or ceiling wax. With atomic power, it will come benefits to mankind that we can as yet only imagine. Yeah, I've got a call with Governor. Yes, sir, I do. Uh, I think you've got to talk to him immediately. Uh, do, uh, do it immediately. We're operating almost totally in the blind. Is that information is ambiguous. Mine is non-existent. I don't know, uh, you know a couple of uh, blind men uh, now have to stagger around making decisions here. In 1945, in the aftermath of war, scientists were heroes, particularly the physicists who had built the atomic bomb. They are men, said Life magazine, who wear the tunic of Superman and stand in the spotlight of a thousand suns. In the public imagination, atomic scientists had harnessed a terrifying power which could literally reshape the world. We knew the world would not be the same. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. Many of the scientists who had worked on the atomic bomb felt a deep sense of guilt about what they had done. They were convinced they now had a moral duty to use the immense forces they had unleashed to better, peaceful purposes. What they did not foresee were the demands that would be made on them when their science came out of the laboratory and into the world of politics and big business. They would lose control and be forced to compromise and to deceive. So all of a sudden we found that as scientists and technologists we were capable of changing in a massive way the framework in which society functioned. I and many others felt that nuclear power represented a major energy future for the world. You have to understand that this was the first time that mankind had ever found an energy source which wasn't a routine natural phenomenon. Fire, of course, comes every time a lightning strikes a forest. Nuclear power was something else completely. We made it. And our ability to give the world 
a what appeared to be and still does appear to be a limitless energy source for the future uh, was to uh, any scientist and engineer probably the most exciting philosophic concept you could find. Today at Shippingsport, Pennsylvania, we began building our first atomic power plant of commercial size. Mankind comes closer to fulfillment of the ancient dream of a new and a better Earth. The scientists have provided us with an example of nuclear science at work. In this baton, there is a small source of neutrons. I bring this source of neutrons over to this place in which we have uranium, and we set up a bit of atomic fission. This will move the marker on the scale and finally light the light, and the project will be started. of the United States has just started off electronically the groundbreaking power shovel 1,400 miles away in Shippingport, Pennsylvania. In this general mood of enthusiasm for science, politicians began to look to atomic power as more than just cheap electricity. It became the way to a better world. Это были годы, годы больших надежд. Только что умер Сталин, пришел к власти Хрущев. И атомная энергия рассматривалась как средство для достижения лучшего уровня благосостояния народа. Тем более, что мы все тогда были загипнотизированы ленинским лозунгом. У Ленина есть такой лозунг. Коммунизм – это значит советская власть плюс электрификация всей страны. Вот электрификация – это атомная энергия, плюс советская власть, и значит – коммунизм. At the very same time as Eisenhower began construction at Shippingport, Russia suddenly announced it had already built the world's first nuclear power station. What the Soviets did not reveal was that it took more electricity to run the plant than it produced. Then in 1956, another country entered the nuclear race. In this case, the atom's role was to recapture the glories of the past. Tomorrow, Her Majesty the Queen, here at Calder Hall in Cumberland, is to open the first nuclear power station in the world to operate on an industrial scale. Our prosperity in the Victorian era, wrote the government's scientific advisor, Lord Charwell, was due to the men who put Britain 80 years ahead in the use of steam power. Our prosperity in the coming century will depend on learning how to exploit the latent energy in uranium. Uranium. Well, now that is uranium. That little black thing I'm holding in my hand, two pounds of that size of uranium. And the potential energy which could be given off by this when properly used is equal to the energy, or the heat, if you like the word better, produced by 2,600 tons of coal. That is uranium. Atomic scientists, by a series of brilliant discoveries, have brought us to the threshold of a new age. It is with pride that I now open Calder Hall, Britain's first atomic power station. The British government announced that by 1965, half the country's electricity would come from nuclear power. Now, now Dr. Leslie, we, see, it seems to me, in, in the building of this great place and its operation, have actually got ahead of the Russians and of the Americans. Yes, the atom is on its way to brighten our towns and to help manufacture our most dependable and indispensable household servants. In the late 50s, the Atomic Energy Commission made films that portrayed an atomic future in America. Scientists designed nuclear cars, planes and rockets. Others predicted whole new cities powered by vast atomic engines. If somehow a product could be atomic, it had to be good. ...which are now being developed with atomic energy. Even your toothpaste may be a product of the atomic age. Да, я считаю, что, в общем, это был, это был золотой век физики. И вообще появление энтузиазма у ученых, у специалистов. Они многое могут, многое могут. 
Вот, что у них какие-то большие возможности появляются. 